How to file your taxes for free step by step. Welcome back. In this video, I'm showing you step by step how to file your taxes for free in the software that I recommend, Free Tax USA. Regardless of your situation, Free Tax USA is free. Amanda here, you're watching the Business Finance Coach where I simplify everything about the technicalities of life, taxes, money, all of this stuff because I truly believe that the world needs what you have to offer and you shouldn't be weighed down and stressed out by these technicalities. If you're new here, consider subscribing while still watching this video and hit subscribe to be notified of new videos. Now let's jump into filing your taxes for free. So if you head to freetaxusa.com, you can see this is what it looks like. If you click this start a free return, you're gonna get started on 2019 return, whatever the most recent tax year is that you can file. If you need to do a prior year return, come up to this prior year tab and you can select the year you wanna do. Most softwares don't even let you do prior years, this many prior years. And that's another one of the reasons I really recommend and like Free Tax USA. So go ahead and start free return to get started. If you're a returning user, you'll click here to log in. A new user, you'll go ahead and create your account and then click the create new account button. On the next screen, you can see they're saying congratulations, you've successfully created your account. They're asking if you wanna import your tax information for last year using like a prior year PDF. I don't typically recommend this, once you enter your information for this year, going forward, your information will always be in here for you. I'm gonna click continue. Here, they're asking for, I just don't recommend uploading the PDF, you know, just enter the information. It's only gonna take a few minutes and we'll get to go over it together in this video. So right now, they're just going over some instructions for getting around. You can see we're gonna move this way through these options and we can't click these other tabs yet because we're gonna move in order. But once we get through it once, you can go back to anything just by clicking that spot. Now you can see they talk here about how secure they are and how great they are continue so now you're going to put in personal information here you can see at the bottom after you enter your personal information can a parent or somebody else claim you as a dependent on their return this is less of an issue these days because we don't have dependents anymore but it does matter as far as credits and deductions whether you qualify as someone's dependent most people will say no uh, and most people will leave all of these as no. They'll read through them and if it's, if it's different, go ahead and change it. But these things generally don't apply to people. Save and continue. Filing status. So filing status is based uh, on the last day of the year. What was your status? Did you get married on the last day of the year, 1231? If so, you're married. If you're married, you can file married filing joint or married filing separately. It is not really an option though. Married filing separately has huge disadvantages. Rarely does that ever come out in a better situation because there's so many things that hurt you filing married filing separate. It's really for that situation where you can't file with your spouse. That's what it's there for. Otherwise, if you're single 1231, then put single. If you're qualifying widower, that means that you had a spouse die in the last two years and you have a dependent that you take care of who lives with you. Head of household is similar. You're single, but you have a dependent and you maintain a house for them, head of household. Now you can't file head of household, one spouse file head of household and one spouse file uh, like married filing separate. That doesn't work. I'm not sure, help me decide. If you check this, they're going to ask you some questions and help you decide. I'm gonna choose single and continue on. Do you have any dependents or qualifying children? So if you wanna read more about essentially these two sets of rules, then you can do that by clicking these links. Who qualifies as a dependent? Who is a qualifying child? What if my other child's other parent claims my child? More information. So there's all sorts of links there. I'm gonna say no and continue. But if you say yes, then you'll add each dependent. Did you receive a notice CP01A? If so, you should put yes and enter your PIN from the IRS. That will only apply to a few people. 
You can review all of your personal information here and click edit. And remember, you can always come back to this tab by clicking here and going directly to say, change your filing status, change your dependents. So don't let any one of these sections or questions stop you. Just keep moving forward and you can always come back. Put whatever you think, maybe note it on a piece of paper, or you can also put it on a bookmark. You can click bookmark and then it will be and bookmark this page and you can put any notes about what your question is and add bookmark. And then you can see this list to come back to. Pretty awesome, huh? So now we'll continue. Now here they're going to prompt us to upgrade to Deluxe. Now then you get chat support to ask questions, audit assistance, and guess how much this costs? $6.99. This is like $60 through TurboTax. So $6.99, you know, it might be worth it. If you have to amend your return, so let's say you get a W-2 or another form later on, it's free to do that because you paid the $6.99. So I think a lot of people will feel comfortable doing that. I'll say no for this example. Now we're gonna continue to the income tab. See, now we're starting in here. You can see the arrow shows where we're at and we've passed all of the other sections in green. So do you wanna enter W-2s? Now let's say that you didn't have your W-2 yet. You could say yes and just enter something in. When you file your taxes, you need to be sure you enter the exact numbers from your W-2, which looks like this, you can see here on screen. And then you're going to line up box one, the first box with box one. So I'm putting 50,000 for our example. Box one, three, and four, Five are typically all the same amounts, your total wages, and then box two is your estimated tax withholding, which is the amount that we're actually calculating on your tax return. Boxes four and six are flat taxes, and so those are typically correct already. Finish entering everything exactly as it is on your W-2. Scroll to the bottom and click continue. Then you'll be able to select yes to enter another W-2 or no and continue. And then we come to the common income section. So this is listing all types of income that many people have. Wages, salaries, interest income. To the right of the description, you see the tax form that that type of income is reported on. And just like with the W-2, you want to enter that form exactly into the software. State tax refund and you itemize your deductions. You'll get 1099G to enter. Retirement income, social security benefits, unemployment compensation, dividend income. And here we have business and rental income and then other uncommon income. So this is the common income section. And of course, business is, and rental is included here. So you click this arrow and then you'll be able to add in Schedule C income. If you have a 1099 miscellaneous, you enter it separately and then you assign it to your business. If you have a Schedule K-1 from investing in a business, rental income, farm income, and then, like I said, on common income, we can come down here, gambling income, some very specific schedule one, business stuff, um, and other, other contract straddles, that type of stuff. I'm doing a separate video where I go into detail for the rental and the business up here. I'm gonna continue for now to show you through the software. So then you'll come to an income summary and you can drill into anything that you want to fix or edit. Now we're gonna to continue to the next tab, deductions and credits. So this is something that's really great to understand, standard deduction or itemized deductions. You only get to use whichever is greater for federal purposes, the standard deduction or the itemized deductions. Itemized deductions are things like charitable contributions, medical expenses, state taxes. Many of these were limited and because we got rid of the personal and dependency deduction and raised the standard deduction, it's even harder to itemize. But what they're saying to you here is you may still want to enter your information, say medical expenses, charitable contributions, because it might count for your state. And if you want to use Freetax USA for your state software, if you enter that information, it will all transfer over at once. Now really quickly to show you, this is a 2017 return. 
unfortunately, because of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act through the Republican government, um, the return now is very confusing to look at. It, they made two pages, eight pages, um, and it's changed 2018 and 2019. It's now different as well. So I'm just going to use this form to show you how Free Tax USA lines up with the form because this can be really helpful. You can see this first section is your information, filing status, dependents, then income. Then we have these specific deductions for adjusted gross income. And then we have some a few other deductions down here, the itemized versus the standard deduction. And that brings us to taxable income and then our taxes and our credits. But this just lays things out nicely in order so that you can see the flow of the return. So we'll continue on here. These are those itemized deductions I was just listing only in more detail and they talk about those changes that went through because of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Now you can see just like we had an income summary, this is a deduction summary. We can drill into anything we want to look at more. And this is where you could choose. I want to take the itemized deduction even if it's actually smaller than my standard. You would need to do that if you're married filing separate and your spouse is itemizing. Even if you're itemized, even if you have no itemized, you would have to do that because your spouse did it. And that's just one example of how married filing separate is limiting. So generally, you're just going to click save and continue and take the standard deduction. Pause. If you are confused by any of that explanation, do check out other videos on these topics. But keep in mind that you don't actually need to understand this to do your taxes. You can just continue answering the questions and look over your form to make sure you understand the numbers at the end. Now, if you will have gotten a form, most likely for healthcare, either 1095A or B or C, A is if you use the health insurance marketplace and they need to check based on your income and the subsidy you got to determine if you owe any money or not. So I'm gonna say no to not go through this. I could do a separate video on each item that I'm covering here. IRA contributions, they're asking you some questions to make sure all of that's handled correctly. College tuition expenses and Form 1098-T, same thing. Student loan interest, I'll say no, but if you do, you put yes, and then you'll be able to enter your 1098-T. You may be able to log into your lender to get that information. Teacher expenses, so this one is right here. They're asking us now about these items, our retirement plan, our education expenses. Save and continue. You can see where we're at here. We're all the way down here, and then we're gonna do our deductions and credits. No, we did not have that. Earned income credit question, but based on zero income that I've entered, there's zero deduction. Home energy credits, no child care expenses. And then we have some other common deductions and credits. IRA contribution, tuition, student loan interest. Again, these are all right here. And I'm gonna continue. Other deductions and credits, continue. And then this is a summary, just like we had a summary for income and for the main deductions, for itemized deductions. So now we're almost done. You can see how easy this is. That's why I wanted to go through one time straight. So you can see if you made estimated tax payments, um, if you made an, a payment with an extension, 2020 estimated tax payments, if you want to figure out what that amount should be, you can use this. So here we have just a few other things, um, other random income. Um, I'm going to say no, I don't want to go through the refund maximizer, but you could do that and they're going to ask you some more questions based on what you've already entered to make sure you didn't miss anything. Now they're making us check for some documents and you can see here we're done on the summary, okay? And once you get to the summary, this follows that calculation on the tax form and that's why I wanted to show you the tax return. I encourage you to take a look at it and then you can actually view it by clicking here and it will pop up. It's just a review copy. You can see this form is a little different this year, but it's the same concept. We just have schedules attached that removed some of the lines. So anyways, you can see a summary of everything here, 
And then the next step is going on to the state return. And you do not want to start the state return until you are finished with your federal because the information doesn't go back and forth. It only goes over once. So that's just one tip. And again, you'll be able to move forward and select your options to file. Once you finish going through all of your state questions, then you'll be onto the filing tab. And just as you've seen so far, it's very straightforward. You just go through and answer the questions and you'll be able to e-file your return online or print it out and mail it in. All right, thanks for watching. I'd love to hear if you have any questions, what you think of the software, comment, like, share with someone who needs this video. And otherwise there may be some other videos linked around here that you would like to watch. And I hope to see you in the next video. I wish you the best of luck with your taxes and do let me know if you run into any questions. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Bye.